Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for another episode of Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And as I kind of hinted at and promised yesterday, today's video is going to be a story of shortages. Our, our story begins up in Norbit, where we are, where we've been, as, as you've seen, we've been producing lots and lots of sciencey things. However, over here, you can see this this belt is completely empty. This is where we should have a supply of um, a supply of low density structures coming through. So we're have had, we've been having problems with these to a, to varying degrees for a, for a little while now, and yeah, there's there's a few of them on the belt over here, but they're all been they're all getting slurped up very very quickly and turned into mostly into space scaffolding and belts to be honest, because we've been we've been expanding out so much that we've had to do quite a lot of um, that we've been build built you basically we've been putting down enormous quantities of space scaffolding and large quantities of belts as well, and the system just doesn't seem to be able to keep up. So in the last stream, in an attempt to sort of to curb some of the uh, the problems we're having in, in, in sort of very temporary ways, we're going around pulling up sort of bits like this. Where, where there's there's nothing in this area, so we didn't need any scaffolding there. And there's quite a lot of scaffolding all the way across the top of here, I think. So we've, we've pulled up lots of this spare stuff. Um, we've sacrificed bits from areas where it's not really needed, like across the middle of here, and so on. So, and, But all of these things, they're only very, very short-term fixes. Yes, sure, that'll allow us to get things like... I, I did that because I needed to extend my um, out, out this way to put some more radiators in, or to, to put some more science labs in over here. And Mike was trying to get tr was trying and waiting desperately to, for the um, scaffolding to come over from to build out this way to build it, put up, put together his material sciences. So yeah, scavenging bits and pieces where it's not being used is, I mean, it works for a certain amount of time, but very quickly you run out of areas that can be ripped up. And actually, there's quite a lot up here. There's quite a bit down here. There, there are a few places where there is some spare still, but in general, you don't really want to go around just cannibalizing your own base because eventually you'll you'll um, you'll run out of other people's money to spend, as the uh, as the saying goes. So let's have a, let's have let's have a look and find out why we don't seem to have enough of it. So obviously it's not coming up from Norvis at the rates we need it to. And if we look down on Norvis, we can see that well, presumably there's just none on the bus. I, I, I'm not sure which belt I'm supposed to be looking at here, but oh no, there is actually there, this this belt. Where where am I on the bus? Even? Interesting. The belt the bus seems to be seems to have plenty of it right now. So I don't know why it's not being shipped up to space. Um, so over here, it'll be then fed up into the rocket. The rocket, ha okay, the rocket has quite a lot in it already. This doesn't feel like the amount it's supposed to have, though. So if we look at this, we can see oh, 8,000. 8,000 is a fairly significant amount. It's obviously not enough. So let's let's nip back up to Norbit's orbit and have a look at the um, have a look at the shopping list over here. Um, because this is where we request all the things we need. So one of these will have a low density structures on it somewhere. So there we go. We're requesting eight thousand, and apparently that's not enough because we've run out. So let's let's make that into twelve thousand. And if we now go and have a look down on Norvis again, so there we go. We've got a, now now got a flood of the low density structures coming through. So we're going to pour them into the rocket as quickly as we can until the rocket inevitably fills up, which will be fairly soon because it's at 491 stacks already. So it's only only, only another nine stacks of it needed, and, that, and then the rocket will launch, and then we'll have a little bit of a a little bit of a um, supply of those for for, for a short time. We'll have 8,000 of them, which 8,000 is quite a lot. So that should keep us going for a little while. But the problem is, if we follow the um, the bus all the way back up like this, and then up here. <clears throat> Around here, we'll see. Actually, at the moment, it's not too bad. We have we have forty thousand in storage in the uh, at the at the end of the bus here that can all be pumped pumped outwards and down 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 the belt to go into there. But we were having some serious issues before, so we, we tracked the issues down to the source and we looked over here. And so there were a couple of problems. One of them was that this system just wasn't running fast enough. Um, and therefore wasn't producing the uh, producing the resources quickly enough. We didn't have we didn't and so we didn't have enough low density structures. So it looks like Mark has come in here and he's put in these um, speed module uh, these speed beacons, and meaning we can now have oh we've gone all the way up to tier three productivity modules as well in these. So this is now boost this is boosting a product, productivity boost of 32 percent, which isn't which is not bad at all, and it's still running at 40 percent faster than its normal crafting speed. So we're doing. We're doing well now. This is probably why there seems to be enough at the moment. We are churning out a good number of low density structures. That said, even even with the number we're pumping out, there's a bit. There's not that many in the storage over here. There's only sort of um, there's probably less than 600. Um, and you can see the problem here is that we've run out of plastic. Now I'll come back to that because the problem previously was that we didn't have enough copper. Uh, with, there was a massive shortage of copper for this and in not, not enough being taken up into space, which is why we ran out of the pipes as I was talking about yesterday. Because for some reason space pipes require steel, which is fair enough, you may need to make the pipe out of something. They need glass and they need copper wire and they need something else I think. But they need, yeah, so there was a massive shortage of copper everywhere. 
Mark has fixed that problem in a fairly fairly significant way. So before we had up here, we had the copper was being produced by um, by this system up here, where so we're bringing in copper ore. It's being processed down into the uh, into the into enriched copper, then into molten copper, then turned into the ingots, which can then be passed down the middle here and loaded into the station and chopped up into plates and loaded into this station. Great. Um, but it wasn't fast enough. That, that was not that wasn't able to keep up. So through the magic of copy paste, we now have another uh, copper production facility down here that's bringing in <laughs> copper ore and Vulcan uh, uh, pyroflux and acid and, and uh, shipping them all up here, where they can then be turned into the in, into enriched, into molten, and into into ingots, which can be brought around here, put into a station, and chopped up into into plates to be put into here. So yeah, this is going well. We now, as you can see, well, we did have the, these were full until the train came in to steal some of it. But that's that's how it works. That's what we expect. And hopefully now, with these two with this with these two systems running in parallel, we will have enough copper. So we have quite literally doubled the amount of copper we're, we're producing. The concern now, of course, is whether our copper supply, copper ore supplies, that is the copper that's copper ore that's coming out of the um, uh, the the core chunk processing over here, and also the uh, copper ore that's being dug up out of mines like. I can't see it, like, uh, like this one and this one, whether they're going to be able to keep up. And currently, it looks like they are. This one is, this, this station is completely full. There's a train sat there merrily minding its own business. So yes, this seems to be all right at the moment. Part of the reason this is, this is going quite well is because Mark has opened up a new copper field. So up here, um, there's four million up here. It's being shoved into the trains up here. So we, we've got, we've got a bit more of it being brought out. We've, been, we've got, a, we've got more copper supply being added in order to help us keep up with the extra demand. So that is why we now have plenty of copper here. <clears throat> the next problem though is the plastic. So it seems as you can see there's a massive gap in here. The plastic is not being brought in as quickly as it should be. That said there are a couple of plastic trains sitting here which is a little bit odd. It's an odd place to keep them. But the problem is if we look down in the plastic area, so down here, we have we have plastic sort of dribbling through at a rate. We have we have a some in storage over here so once this gets up to having enough for a train to come and pick it up one of those trains will come down here um so the slightly weird thing about the way this system runs works is that we we're, we're keeping spare trains here but they won't go into the station until or they no, the previous train this is this plastic train won't leave this station until there's somewhere for it to go to pick up some more plastic which means this station has to have enough for another train to come to it it's a slightly odd system um it's one due to the sort of because because we're not using LTN, things are running a little bit strangely, and so you see there you, go, you see a destination full there. So this train isn't going anywhere, even though there's another copper train, uh, another plastic train here that would love to come in and unload its plastic. So we've again, once again, run out. So down here, that means we need basically we need to have more plastic coming through, and things are running okay at the moment. But when I looked a few minutes ago, only some of these machines were actually producing the plastic, uh, and that was because we'd run out of coal of all things. So if you look in here, you see there's a, there's only there's less than 800 coal in each of these warehouses, and a supply of about a thousand in there because that's how it balances. We've got plenty of oil at the moment by the looks of it. So the 11,000, 10,000, whatever in these is about the point where it starts to request a train. But the main the main stock we've still got 200,000 across in these tanks, so we're okay. We've got a good supply of oil going at the moment. It seems to be coal that's the problem. So I guess we're going to need to find some new coal patches, set up some new coal mines in order to sort that problem out. Um, he says having a quick look. Is that one? No, that's no, just... Oh, there's, yes, <laughs> half a million there. That's not really going to be worth it, worth it. So there is a coal mine up here and it is currently loading a train. So that is running, that is working, that's doing what we would expect. We need to find more coal mine, coal patches though in order to put mining drills on them. Uh, there's approximately none there it's less than half a million it's not even worth getting out of bed for nice big copper patch there so we're going to be all right for copper for a little while longer um but we do seem to have some serious shortages of coal oh there's a patch okay there's three and a half million over there that's going to be one that's worth going after and um and, and breaching and that, that'll keep us that will help help for a while there's another pathetic patch there uh just under a million that's almost worth bothering with but yeah, as you can see, coal appears. It appears that coal is going to be a bit of a problem. A million and a half there. So yes, that's potentially problematic. Now, um, what we could potentially, what we could do, is look for a coal-based planet. So if we have a look, at, look in, in in the system, there is. Uh, there's this one, the Zendia, which has it has a 17% threat rate, and it's waterless. So it's going to be a pain in the wasp name to get the um, to get the coal out of. But we could go there for coal. There is a Hyperion, which it has, is also waterless. Jeez, uh, ha and has a oh, this is a zero percent threat. So we could potentially go there and start. We would have to ship the water in as ice, which is annoying, but can be done. 
Um, and that's it. Those are, the, those are our two cold planets, and they're both waterless. That's very unhelpful. Um, that said, cry, uh, Vitamelange planets... Where's the Vitam... Oh, um... Vitamelange planets like this one also tend to have quite, often have quite a lot of coal. No, this one doesn't appear to. It's, it's, it's slightly more than Norvis, but still not a huge amount. Um, that said, let's have a look. There are... No, these are all, these are all nuclear scorches rather than coal patches. <laughs> um, no, I'm not seeing significant coal patches on this planet. So... Yeah, we might, we we may have to come up with, we may have to uh, do something cunning in order to get, uh, in order to get uh, coal, in, in order to get a greater supply of coal, because that does occur, does seem to be our limiting factor at the moment. So, okay, we'll be fine for the time being, because we can go out and tap that 3.6 million patch and the one that were, and the 1.4 million, and if we get really desperate, perhaps the other ones. But at the moment, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a horrendous shortage. So we are very, very short of, we're, so we're, we're short, we are a bit short of low density structures, although we've caught up a bit now. Um, and the shortage of those is because we're not able to make them fast enough, because, and we're not able to make them fast enough now because we don't have enough plastic, and we're not able to make the plastic fast enough because we don't have enough coal. There you go, see it's run out now, and so these, all these machines are just sort of, they're getting through what's left, but the amount of coal, the amount of plastic we're going to be able to produce from these is going to drop off very, very quickly. So, that is a bit of a problem. I wonder if there's an alternative recipe for plastic or coal or anything like that. Okay, so we can turn oil into coal if we want. That seems like a weird thing to do, if I'm being honest. But, um, cause, cause, yeah, coal and water clearly makes up heavy oil. That's that's how, how things work, right? Um, we could make coal from oil, which, given that we have we do have oil at the moment, is a possibility. But I'm also aware that we don't have... In, we, whilst we have enough oil at the moment, we may well run out. That said, that said, there is a nearby moon that has a lot of um, oil on it. So we could go off and start harvesting from there. Uh, core fragment mining... Um, okay, making so make, we can make wood and wood, coal, and oil from Vitamelange. Um, it's not a great recipe. It's kind of, it feels feels in it feels expensive. Hmm. So no, there, there aren't any other great ways to make coal. So I think we probably won't be trying to make it through some other means. We'll just go off and try and find some somewhere else. But on the subject of trying to get more resources in, Mark has claimed another pair of um, core mines. So there'll be one one there and one there. So that's 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 nice. We're going to get some more more core fragments being brought in, and that, that that's good because we are we are ripping through those as fast as we possibly can. And that is as as I've said before, essentially free resources over here. Essentially free resources. So having this running constantly there we go that's the sort of gap we like to see when a, w between trains um having this running more or less constantly does mean extra resources being pumped around into the system even if something seems to have jammed up a little bit there um no it's all it all seems to be flowing okay yeah i think it's just slow slow on the inputs um yeah so it, it, but it, it, it's a nice boost and nice supply of free resources so we'd like to keep that running as much as we can uh so more more of those mining uh, mines is, is very very useful He's also because he's expanded over here. He's now we've now got another um, a, another pollution belt. Is it? No, it's it's, it's, it's where is it? Oh, here we go. Here, here we go. Another another anti-pollution system running all the way up here and round this way um, in order to make sure that we don't yeah we don't let any pollution out from well from anywhere at all. So we, that means the good thing about that is that means we can expand our building area to anywhere that's inside this this belt that goes all the way up here now. So we've got lots and lots of space to play with should we need it. Um, and I think that's, that's that's definitely a good thing. And it also means that any any pollution that leaches out from any of these mines should, in theory, be picked up. So along here, we've now got these. Uh, okay, there's there's a, there's a belt of, um, of filters, but it doesn't seem to be really keeping up. So these ones along here, not quite dealing with the amount of pollution that's coming out from the mine, unfortunately. Um, okay, I sort of assumed this belt was going to have um, air filters along it as well, but it turns out it doesn't. But never mind. But yeah, the the pollution isn't really going anywhere that we're too worried about just yet, isn't it? In that it's it's not really getting out to the biters, but that is getting a little bit close. So maybe we should do something about that. I've got a new oil field put in down here somewhere. Um, that one. So that's another another turn the pollution off. Another supply of oil. It is in the way of the main bus if the main bus gets expanded any further. Um, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a concern because we've kind of we kind of got virtually everything now. I don't think there's going to be a lot more stuff being built on the bus down here. Oh, look, even more um, low density structures flowing in. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's absolutely fine to have that there. And to be honest, by the time we do get over here, there's only 5.3 million crude oil. We may well find that this is all gone. So we'll, and and also also we can just we could just use blue belts to hop under this entire area and then carry on the, the bus over this way if we needed to. Um, I think we'll probably be okay though. That is quite a chonky bus as it is. 
Mark says he's also put in an enormous number of extra trains, so that's that's good. I'm not quite sure what exactly what they're all doing, but I think it's just to sort of generally keep the anywhere any basically anywhere where there where there was a lack of trains previously, or where the the, the number of trains was the limit on throughput, he's, he'll have put in more. So that'll probably be things like oil transport. Um, uh, copper trans copper ore transport maybe the copper itself being transported around all those sort of things so wherever they wherever their gaps there are now there are now more trains able to pick those sort of things up um i am slightly aware that we have a massive bottleneck in our train system around here it isn't causing any problems at the moment so we, we seem to there, there, don't, there isn't a jam right now but i'm aware that we may end up running into some issues so maybe we should link this this up to here and see what see if that fixes things i don't know um i'm not worrying too much about norvis because mark has it all very well in hand i'm just sort of idly thinking about it as i look at it <laughs> oh and he's also expanded our robo network to the north so we now have a a truly ridiculous sized robo network um, on the plus side, that means if the biters up here get a little bit too friendly and come over and eat some of the wall or attack the turrets, then we can repair it. Uh, the, the, the problem with this sort of thing is that robots are kind of slow, um, unless you've got the Angel Bob's nuclear um, robots. And so by the time one gets from picking up some spare belts down here to putting them down up here, um, it, you've probably encountered the heat death of the universe. It's going to take a long time to get up there. Um, but... Celevi, it probably doesn't really matter. The the system will basically work eventually. The other thing we've been very very short of, and let's turn that off again. The other thing we've been very very short of in general is imasite. Uh, particularly, um, we seem to have quite a lot of the plates on here. I don't see any of the crystals, but maybe we just don't need them down here. Um, so we use it. We're using these for things for some of the more advanced systems. So over here. At the end of this, we're probably this is probably just where we're shipping up into orbit. Oh no, we're using this over here for some of the more advanced belts, apparently, or we will be eventually. Um, you use them for the more advanced um, solar panels, which we are shipping up in, into orbit, and, and and so on. So basically, any any sort of high high tech system, you'll need you'll need to put in the you'll need the site for. And so we're using that in quite large quantities. Um, and unfortunately, over on Taishikuten, and we talked about this last week. The system up here had, had ground to a halt originally because there was too much sand. Then I fixed that by reprioritizing the, um, the the capsules down here, and then there were just just weren't enough capsules. Now, now as you can see, that has been thoroughly, thoroughly fixed, and that is because Mark has upgraded the uh, capsule system over here to use the to the one with the delivery cannon chest in the middle of it, and that means it'll bring in all of the ingredients for the delivery cannon that you're short of, while still allowing you to use up the uh, the, the bits from the core pr frag fragment processing in order to keep keep your efficiency levels up. Um, so we're now producing the um, the, the uh, delivery cannon capsules much much more quickly, and that means we've now completely filled up this belt here and this belt over here, and that means we're starting to ship out imasite again. Uh, so that's that's good, and we can and potentially we can even start to ship out vulcanite as well, except we don't seem to need any right now. Um, also, this is stopped because oh, it's just it's just, it's just as, as the way the processing trickles through. So up here, yes, we are now once again producing the imasite. We have enough imasite plate, which is interesting, uh, but the imasite crystals are uh, in, in a bit a bit short. And oh, that's because we now have too much sulphur. <clears throat> so I did wonder if that was going to happen eventually. Um, ooh, look, what's this? What's this belt doing? Nothing, because that's in the wrong way round. Um, is that a dis sulphur disposal system? Yes, it is. Okay, so over here we can, if we want, we can get rid of some of the uh, some of the sulphur by just passing it through the uh, through the underground belts here. That will get rid of some of the excess and allow it to start flowing up here, which means we can then start having the crystals flow through again, which is a good thing. Uh, we do we do need those crystals. Um, but also, I'm slightly surprised that we're not getting through the uh, through the sulphur as quickly as we would otherwise uh, as quickly as we. Would expect to with the with all of the uh, the vulcanite processing that's going on here. Um, maybe the, I guess there's just not enough vulcanite coming through to use up all the sulphur now that we've massively increased the uh, the amount of imasite we're trying to get through. Um, still, there's, as you can see, we've now got we've now upgraded the um, the imasite processing over here, and that we're bringing it. We've got we've got the system here so that we can drop in more delivery cannons at a time without risk, hopefully without risking overflowing the um, the chest here. Pour it all over into the warehouse and then out to. Um, Yes, you see, it doesn't it doesn't fill up quite as much as it used to before. Uh, so we can the, yes, we can then keep that pump keep the keep a decent amount of it here. Keep the system running over here. Have we now got um, more thermal uh, mineral water being produ being produ brought in here? I'm not not sure. I don't I don't see any because I was expecting us to go off and mine this patch over here, but apparently we haven't. Um, 
but the system seems to be keeping up, which is interesting. I'm um, somewhat surprised. Maybe it's because it was stalled for a while. I think we're still if we if we want a good supply of Immersite here, which I think we're still going to need to upgrade that. However, we probably don't need to have a, a great supply of Immersite coming from here because once again, uh, Mark has been doing upgrades on things and he's been doing producing a separate Immersite processing facility that I believe he's going to put in place on uh, on Norvis, which is going to bring, allow him to bring in lots and lots of Immersite from all the other planets that are producing it, and then have all of the sulfur and the and the Immersite and everything available on Norvis where where it can then be shipped out to where it's needed so this system may end up getting kind of mothballed and in fact that's the, sort of the story of how this planet is going because the, um, the 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 vulcanite system over here is now just sort of almost an afterthought because the um we're using up we're producing far more vulcanite on agnea than we are here and now if we're going to be producing the immersite somewhere as well else as well then this planet's going to be kind of kind of unnecessary i wonder if we can delete can, can we actually delete planets no game says no <laughs> so we're just gonna, we're just going to be stuck with this. We could trim it, which will help a very very small amount with the save game size, but short. Of, but um, yeah, it's not going to it's not going to actually it's not going to actually get us our UPS back, which is what I was hoping for. Potentially, we could eliminate this free power system down here and replace it with the with solar and uh, and steam battery because that's one of the other plans we've got going. Um, but we'll leave that for the future, I think. One planet at a time. Finally, the, the the very last thing to mention, and it, this is, is a little bit of an and then out on Njord, Tristan's put down an additional core miner in place, um, and and uh, in order to get up, upgrade the systems out there slightly. So that brings us pretty much to the end of the video. Um, I can now tell you with um, with uh, with some with uh, either joy or disappointment, depending on how you look at it, that we didn't have any deaths at all in the last stream. Probably because all of us are up in space where we don't tend to be launching nukes and we don't tend to be. Um, getting eaten by biters. Actually, that's not quite true. We're not all in space. Mark is down on Norvis, but Norvis is reasonably pacified at this point, and the stuff he was working on is not sort of is not the sort of stuff where you'd expect to come under threat. So, uh, yes, and a surprisingly safe stream. So, um, but that brings us to the end. So, please check out the channel sponsor. That's treefall.be. Use the code LawrencePlays to get 20% off your game serv hosting services. Um, and also, please come back uh, ooh, on Monday to watch us carrying on with another stream. That'll be 7.30pm UK time. Uh, so we'll be carrying on with all of the stuff I've been talking about today, trying to get everything working up again. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I'll be back playing some more XCOM. So again, please come along to that. Lots of, I always have lots, lots of fun there, even if it's usually sort of uh, trying... La only laughing because otherwise we'd cry and there'll be other videos scattered here and here and there around on the on the channel as uh, over the uh, over the days to come as well so as always thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time bye bye <laughs>